I'm in an ancient city in Turkey, not too far from Ephesus, where Paul wrote to the Ephesian church in uh, chapter 6 of Ephesians, beginning in verse 10. He said, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you will be able to stand your ground, and after you've done everything else, to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Well, it's so good to be back home. Uh, my wife and I have been on the road for about, uh, about six weeks in, uh, in five different countries. And uh, I, I filmed that at an ancient city called Termosis in Turkey on, on Monday. And, uh, and I thought, uh, with this backdrop, why wouldn't I like, read the scripture here uh, where it was, was kind of aimed at? And uh, so it, it's just, it's great to be with you this morning and to be able to, to share out of Ephesians to kind of close out the last chapter of Ephesians, uh, gearing up for King's Academy uh, this, this August and heading into the fall. And uh, if you have any, we're having an interest night uh, this Wednesday, I'd love for you to come out or, or just Talk to me personally if you have any interest at all. We're trying to identify some, some leaders and some people who are looking for like further biblical training. And, uh, and, and so I'm a little jet lagged today, but I'm going to do, I'll, I will make a deal with you. Like I will do my best to be as energetic as possible if you will do your best to like to listen really like actively. And so, uh, so our scripture, our scripture today is, it began with uh, finally, okay, which is, which is Paul's way of saying like, listen up, this is really important. What I'm about to share with you in Ephesians uh, 6, 10 is really important. And he starts out by saying like, be strong in the Lord. And so it's, it's God's will for us to be strong, not in ourselves, but to be strong in our faith and in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, uh, so the title of the message today is, is When the Day of Evil Comes. And it's about standing our ground when we face that day of evil uh, that's mentioned in, in Ephesians chapter 6. And uh, what I've found in life is uh, like in, in one form or another, we have good days and we have bad days. We, we have easy days we have tough days, and all of us in, in our lives, we're, we're all going to face uh, a day of evil, a day that seems kind of overwhelming, kind of like too much, kind of like I don't know if I can handle this, and it comes in a lot of different forms. Sometimes it can come in the form of sickness, and all of a sudden it's just like you get this, you, you get this diagnosis, and, and, and suddenly your whole world t- turns upside down. Uh, and you're and you're facing that and trying to figure out what to do with it. It can it can come in the form of like conflict in our relationships, uh, misunderstandings with one another. It can come in the in the form of of addiction, or doubt, or fear, or shame, or injustice. And uh, so I'm not uh, in Ephesians six. I, I'm I'm not just talking about the consequences. Of, of making bad decisions. You know, sometimes we, we just make bad decisions and the consequences of those kind of play themselves out. Uh, but there is a, the Bible says there is a real enemy of our souls. And his name is, is Satan. 
and he's real. Uh, and, and the day of evil is, is like a spiritual attack from the enemy. Uh, it's an assault that's kind of coming from all sides, uh, and it hits us hard, and it's fairly overwhelming. And, and the, the, what the enemy is trying to do is trying to knock us off of our, our feet spiritually. And, and Ephesians 6 tells us, in the day of evil, when the day of evil comes, when we're facing that day, our goal is just to plant our feet like firmly in the Word of God and to stand, to be able to stand under the weight of whatever it is that is coming our way. And so just a few introductory kind of thoughts as we, as we look at the Scripture. Uh, the first thing is that there is a spiritual war going on. There is, there is a battle for souls. Spiritual warfare is, is real. And in wartime, people live differently. They, they, have, they have different, different uh, expectations. There's, uh, in, in wartime, there is a higher purpose than comfort. And, uh, and we think more communally. In wartime, we think, of, we think of the group that we're part of. In wartime, uh, you, you dress differently. And, and we're going to talk about that with, with the full armor of God in, in, a, in a minute. In, uh, in wartime, the priority is to be prepared. It's not necessarily to just be chill and to be relaxed, but it's to be, it's to be prepared. And the Bible tells us that uh, to be alert because, because the enemy uh, of our soul, Satan, uh, wanders around like a roaring lion looking who he can devour. And in wartime, cruise boats kind of get repurposed and they become, they become battleships. So, so stuff, that, stuff that may have had one purpose is kind of repurposed for, for a higher purpose. And in wartime, it's kind of like everybody becomes, everybody joins the fight. Everybody becomes a soldier, not just a civilian. And, and so in, in wartime, we're kind of called to put the kingdom first and our own stuff second. In 1 Peter 4.12, uh, Peter puts it this way, Dear friends, don't be surprised about the fiery trials that have come among you to test you as if something unusual were happening to you. And uh, we live in a culture, right, where, where even in church culture, if, if we experience difficulty or, 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 or trials, it's kind of like, whoa, whoa, what is, what? I wasn't expecting this. What, what is going on? And the Bible tells us that, uh, you know, it's, it's not something unusual. If you're a Christian and you feel under attack, that is not an unusual thing because there is a war going on. And, uh, and so, so I, uh, I, I pulled up a couple. Like AI is a wonderful thing. And I pulled up a, a couple of, of uh, pictures uh, kind of using, using my own face. But uh, it's like not the first one, okay? It's not, the, it's not you know, the, hey, you know. It's, it's, it's not that. It's, it's, it's the second one. It's, it's the pseudo, it's being like, being ready, being ready for war. And uh, don't, don't you love AI? Don't you love what you can do on your phone? No, <laughs> don't you love what you can do on your phone these days? So, so we're going to talk about the full armor of God. And one of, the, one of the dangers of like a scripture like this is you're kind of like, man, I went to Sunday school. They had flannel, they had the whole, they had all the stuff. So like I already know about all that, but we know about it like at a kid's, you know, that kind of understanding, that kind of level. And so we can, we can kind of tune out when it's a familiar scripture, but, but I want to talk about like the full armor of God, what it means uh, for us today. And so I brought, uh, I had a friend who just, <laughs> I have weird friends. I have, a, I have a friend who's just like, I was like, you wouldn't have to have like a full suit of armor, would you? And he's like, yeah, I got that, you know. And so, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I've got the... <laughs> I've got, I've got all this, this stuff here, the full armor of God, and it doesn't, to be honest, like, it doesn't look comfortable. Like, if I was going to the beach, I wouldn't be putting this on. But, you know, if somebody was swinging a sword at me, 
That's, that's what I would, I would want to have on. And so, uh, so we're going to talk about the full armor of God. And uh, it's, it, it's, not, it's not comfortable sounding, but it's, it's effective when we're fighting the enemy. And so, so Paul was writing to Ephesus. And the word Ephesus it literally means desirable. It was a desirable place. So, so it's basically like Ephesus was like the California of, 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 the, of the Middle East. Like it was a very desirable place to live. It's beautiful there. And there, there were uh, roads going out to like all kinds of other places. So it was the center of a lot of things. Very, very influential, but also very immoral. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound at all like the culture we live in? Very rich and influential, but also a lot of immorality going on. And their, their own philosopher, Heraclitus, said, no one could live in Ephesus and not weep over its immorality. And so Ephesus was a place that was, was known, their, uh, part of their worship of Artemis was, uh, was temple, temple prostitution. When Paul went there to tell them the truth, he, he caused a riot uh, because, because they got upset about, uh, about uh, how he was going to interrupt the idol worship that was, that was going on there. And so, so Ephesus was a, a place with a lot of spiritual, spiritual action uh, going on. And, uh, and, and so Paul, Paul says, you know, be strong in the Lord. And in his mighty power, and uh, you know, and and be be ready to stand. The word "stand" is mentioned there uh, four or five times in in the scripture. And Paul tells us, Paul tells us how to stand. How do you take your stand when the day of evil comes? And so he starts off with uh, with the the belt of truth that you put you put around your waist. And uh, I don't know if you've ever. Uh, I used to do a lot of. I used to do a lot of inner city ministry, and I always. I'd always be in these places where uh, there was all kinds of gangsters hanging on the corner, and and it was uh, like I don't know if they still do this, but they had like, they had like the pants they wore like really low, like ridiculously low, and and I I always had this thought like, okay, if you're you're a gangster, you fight people. How do you fight people with your pants down here? Like, how does that, how does that, how does that work? And uh, and then I was like, you, you you need to pull your pants up and get a belt, right? Like, because uh, belts hold things in in place and and uh, and and kind of keep things together. And uh, and and the the belt of truth, uh, truth is described as a belt that kind of goes around the waist and uh, you know and pr- like protects the internal organs and. Uh, and it may be, and it's described as truth, and it may be particularly geared towards like emotional or relational truth, what we, what we believe about ourselves. And, uh, and Satan is the father of lies, and Jesus is the truth. And, and so a lot of the battles, that the spiritual battles that happen in, in our lives and in our culture it's really a battle in the mind over truth, over what is true and, and what isn't. And truth sets us free, and, uh, and lies, lies uh, they, they enslave us. They tie us up, and they enslave us. And so as Christians, it's absolutely essential that we learn to distinguish between the voice of the world uh, and Satan's voice and God's voice and know what the truth is, and and so we've got to wear we've got to wear the belt of truth, and then it goes on to talk about the the breastplate of of righteousness, and uh, and this is yeah this is like heavy heavy stuff that would that would cover cover the area like around here to uh, obviously if, if if you're being attacked uh, the heart is. Is like a major, a major organ that's going to be attacked because you can shut everything down if you can get the heart. And uh, we live in a culture that that wants to to live wrong but have everything turn out right, and and that's just not possible. And so, 
So the breastplate of righteousness is talking about righteousness simply means right living. It means like taking the word of God, the truth, and applying it uh, and, say, and just making a decision like, I am, going to, I am going to do the right thing. I am going to live right. And uh, what I've found in my life uh, is, that, is that right living actually protects us. It protects us from a lot of heartbreak and emotional pain. Like God knows what he's talking about. He has designed us. And, uh, and when we live according to his, his, his word and his ways, like life really works and uh, sin doesn't. Sin just like at its, uh, the bottom line is like sin may look like fun for a season, but, but it's not sustainable. It doesn't really work. It always causes destruction. It always makes life com- uh, complicated. Uh, and believe me, like I grew up a pagan, okay? Like I grew up like for the first 24 years of my life, like I just did not go to church at all. And I had like nothing to do with church or God or, or anything like that until I, I had one of those like uh, Jesus like knocked me off my horse like Apostle Paul moments and I, and I kind of did, did a 180. But I, I've tried both ways of living. Uh, and, and God's way of living works. It really does. And so the, breast, the breastplate of righteousness is, uh, you know, much of our trouble comes from like leaving little doors open to Satan. And uh, I don't know if you've ever had, have, ever had like, a, like a salesperson or somebody like trying to get into your house that you don't really want into your house. And you're like, you're at the door and you've got to like, you've got to like crack like and you're talking to them, but you're, you really don't want them to come in, but they somehow get like their foot in the door. Or they get like a little pain, and like, and then it's really, at, at that point, it's really hard to shut the door and get rid of them. And, uh, and when we give Satan a foothold, when we just leave those little cracks, when we give Satan a foothold in our life, he can get in there and those turn into strongholds. And when something is a stronghold, like when you're tempted and then you give in and you sin, and when something becomes like a stronghold, then you need, often you need external help to, to, to like to break it uh, because, because it's, uh, it's gone from being a foothold to being a stronghold. And so the breastplate of righteousness is just that decision that like, I'm going to do, do the right thing. I'm going to make the right choices and do the right thing. And then, uh, and then we have the, like the gospel shoes, the gospel boots. Now, my, my, my friend didn't have any, he didn't have any Roman boots so these are just Timberlands, to be honest, okay? These are just, uh, but, but um, uh, you, if, if you're going into battle, like flip-flops and slippers aren't, like, aren't, aren't going to do you any good. Like you've got to, like I did, we did a lot of hiking this summer because uh, our, our, we, we visited some of our kids and they really like to hike and, and, uh, and you've got like, you to have the right footwear. If you don't have the right, if you're like going down the side of cliffs in flip flops, you're like you're in trouble. Like you got to have the right footwear, and, and you got to kind of be, you kind of got to be ready to go. And uh, and God's, and so this is like this is like walking. This is about like walking in God's will. That's right. Like it's it's the uh, it's the the gospel shoes that that bring peace. God's will is not easy. Uh, but being at the center of God's will, even if a lot of stuff is swirling around, uh, can, be, can be peaceful. And, and so one of the places that I was at this summer was uh, in Africa, in, uh, in, in, uh, just outside of Nairobi, there is a large slum called Gabira. It is, it is, the, it is the largest slum in Africa, and it is one of the largest slums in the whole world. There are 1.5 million people all crammed in to these, to these very, very poor conditions in a five-mile radius. It's probably some of the most intense uh, extreme poverty that I've ever seen like face-to-face and, and been in. And, and so the ministry where we're working with there, they were uh, like taking us around, visiting different people 
uh, and taking food to them and, and praying for them and doing that kind of stuff. And we'd be walking in these, uh, in these uh, like little dark alleyways and there'd be like open sewers running through the alleyways and you had to simultaneously like look down and be careful where you were stepping but you also had to like keep your wits about you up here uh, because there was a, a lot, everything was made out of uh, like out of tin and there were like sharp edges of, of roofs uh, like at, at head level and uh, uh, you know it was a really really interesting interesting place to like to, to walk uh, but the but you know what like out of all the places we were this summer uh, and some of them were really nice vacation places Colleen and I like we discussed this yesterday like what was your favorite place uh, out of the whole summer Kibera the slum do you know why? Because we were walking with Jesus there. We were, we were, we had our gospel boots on, and uh, and we were we were doing ministry, and we were walking with Jesus, uh, and there was just a great sense of meaning and purpose, like in peace, in our ten days in Kibera. There were there were two young men. They're they're in their they're in their mid thirties, Kepha and Nico. They've started a, a ministry there. They, uh, they grew up in Kibera. Kepha uh, grew up with a single mom. There were seven kids in his family. Uh, he grew up very poor. He's, he knew Nico since they were in grade one. They decided when they were like in, in grade school, the two of them decided together, we're going to be different than everything that's going on around us. We are going to live our lives for Jesus. And Jesus blessed their lives. And they actually, they actually got enough education and enough money to get out of Kibera. But, but then the Lord called them back. And now they run a foundation there, uh, like helping hundreds and hundreds of people to get out of extreme poverty. And, uh, and when, I, when I look at people like Kepha and Nico, they're like, they're heroes they're heroes to me, and they've, I, you know, I look at them, and I'm like, they've got, they've got their priorities straight. They've got their gospel shoes on, and then there is the, then there is the shield of faith. Now, uh, a shield is, is kind of to, to block things, and the, the shield of faith, it, it, it talks about the fiery darts of the enemy, the fiery darts that Satan shoots at us in, in our spiritual lives. They can be arrows of, of doubt, they can be arrows of fear or condemnation uh, or shame. And like faith, faith is like a shield. If you're shooting things at me and I have a shield, I can block them so they don't hit me and hurt me. And, and faith is like that. Our faith uh, protects us so that the, the things that hit us just kind of kind of like bounce off. I don't know if, you're, if there's any like old Star Trek fans here. But I grew up like as a kid watching, uh, like watching Star Trek on, on TV in the north end of St. John. And, uh, and they, they had this thing, uh, they, they had these things like called the, the, on, the, on the Enterprise called the phaser shields. And like the phaser shields, like when the Klingons and everybody were like shooting at them, if the phaser shields were up, like everything would bounce off. But there was always one moment in every episode where, where Scotty would say, would, like, Captain, the phaser shields are down, right? And then, like, and then they, and the Klingons would be shooting, and, like, everybody would be, like, the whole, the whole ship would be rocking, and he'd be, like, working to get the phaser shields back up. Uh, and faith is, like, faith is like our phaser shield to protect us uh, uh, against Satan. And the stronger, the stronger we grow in our faith, uh, the more attacks we can, we can withstand. There is a, an old Pentecostal evangelist at the turn of the 20th century. His name was Smith Wigglesworth, which is a very British name, right? Smith Wigglesworth. So he was like, he was a plumber who turned a Christian evangelist. And he was kind of like one of those wild characters. And uh, one of my favorite stories of his is like he's, he tells a story where he said like, I woke, up, I woke up one night and Satan was standing at the foot of my bed. And then somebody said, well, what did you do? And he said, I looked at him and I said, oh, it's only you. And I went back to sleep. <laughs> and uh, like, I love that. Like that, that is faith. That is, that is the, the, 
the shield of faith right there. And so, so we, as we live as Christians, we, like, we build up this history with God, right? We build up this history with God where like, he comes through again and again and again. And what that does is, is it builds our faith. And, and so we, we learn how to trust him. And then there's the, the helmet of salvation. And uh, this one has some, has some chain mail to kind of wear around the neck as well. And obviously, this, this is to protect the, the head region. And so, so this is about like knowing who God is and who you are in God and uh, knowing the word and the promises of God so that our thinking is, is Christian and, and not just cultural. And, and so just as the helmet like protects the brain, our identity in Christ helps to, to protect our, our thinking. And uh, everybody's heard about IQ, uh, which is our intelligence quotient. And, and uh, there's been a lot of stuff about EQ, which is our like, emotional quotient. Th- those, are, those are those people who have, who have like, all kinds of emotional intelligence. Like they just know how to deal with people. My wife scores off the charts in this. Like, when we were in Africa, I, like, I swear, like, she hugged her way around Kenya. Like, she was just, she was just making friends with everybody. And they were like, we love Colleen. She is, like, off the charts in the EQ. But there's, there's something, there's another thing that Christians have that, that the world doesn't have. It's called SQ. It's a spiritual quotient. It's having spiritual intelligence. And, and the Bible tells us that like, we have access to the mind of Christ. And so when we look at things, we have wisdom that the world does not have and that the world cannot manufacture. When I look at everything uh, going on, when I look at the, the war going on in the Middle East right now and I, and I think about the politicians trying to figure this out and handle it, I'm like, you do not have, like, you have IQ and you have EQ, but, but unless you understand spiritual warfare and spiritual things, there's, there's no way that, that you can bring any kind of solution to what, to what is going on there. It's, it's way more complicated than that. And as Christians, we have the helmet of salvation. We have, uh, we have access to the mind of Christ who can give us a wisdom that goes beyond ourselves. And then, uh, then there is the, the sword of the Spirit. I was, uh, I was speaking at a, uh, like a big youth rally one time in Cincinnati, and I had about like 3,000 teenagers, and, uh, and, I, and I thought this would be a cool illustration. I had a sword like this, and I wanted to illustrate like the difference in your life when you're doing your devotions and you're not doing your devotions, and so like, I, I was like, are there any middle schoolers in the house? And I was like, I got, you know, I got four or five middle school guys that really wanted to get on stage, and so... So I was, like, I was like, okay, like, I'm somebody who's not, like, reading the Bible, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not doing my devotions. Now attack me, and they all ran at me and took me down. And then I, and then I was like, okay, go back there. And, and then they went back to their spot, and, like, then I had this big sword. And I was, and I was like, okay, now, now, like, I'm doing my devotions. I've got the sword of the Spirit. Like, run at me now. And uh, they all ran at me full tilt. And I, and, I, and I had this moment, I had this choice, I was like, I'm swinging this sword, and I was like, my, I, I either have to kill a middle schooler, or totally, or totally blow this illustration. So I was like, and then they took me down. So never, never do an illustration with middle schoolers, okay, because they're just like, they're fearless, they, they just don't, they don't care. They will, they will die on the sword. Uh, but the, the, the sword of the Spirit is, is the Word of God. And uh, it, can be, it can be defensive, but it's, it's also an, an, offensive, an offensive kind of weapon. And, uh, and this is how Jesus used, uh, used it in, uh, in, in Matthew when, uh, when, when he's tempted in the desert and Satan attacks him and says, like, turn these stones to bread. Jesus quotes scripture back at Satan, and it's basically, it's basically like this sword fight that's going on. Like, throw yourself... You're, if you're the Son of God, throw yourself from the highest place. And, and, uh, and Jesus says, uh, the Bible says, like, don't, don't test or tempt uh, the Lord your God. And then Satan says, I'll give you, like, I'll give you like every kingdom 
that I, that I influence. And, and Jesus says, uh, the word says, uh, just worship God and God only. And so what's going on there is, is, is this spiritual uh, like fight with the, with the sword of the, of the spirit. And, uh, and so we have to talk back to Satan and we have to talk back to sin when we're attacked. And uh, the word is, the word is, is like uh, our restraining order against sin and Satan. You, you can go like, hey, wait a minute. You don't have any right to come around here anymore. Like the word says, you don't have any power over me. And, uh, and it's, it's kind of like our, our bill of kingdom rights. When all the promises in the, the word tell us like what our rights are like as believers. And so if we, if we try to live each day without the armor of God, it's, uh, it would be like, it would be like uh, going to war dressed in a Speedo armed with a feather duster. I did not bring that costume, okay? So don't, don't worry. But like, uh, it's, it's a, ridiculous, a ridiculous picture, right? Uh, but that's, that's what it's like if we're, if we're trying to like uh, fend off Satan without, without the word of God. And so I come to two sides of my family like, two sides of my family are like uh, uh, the Scottish side, the McNeil clan is, is from the Isle of Barra. So it's this little island off of Scotland. And, and they were Scottish pirates. They're, they're, they just lived on an island and robbed everybody. And then the other side of my family is Vikings. Okay, like the Nordstrom side is, is like Vikings. And so, so, I love this metaphor, okay? Like, I just, I like, there's something about this, the battle metaphor uh, here. And, you know, I'm, I've, I've always been a sucker for, the, like, any of this. As soon as, there's, as soon as there's a movie where somebody paints their face blue and picks up a sword, like, I'm in, right? That's just, uh, and that's, that's kind of what's, What's going on here, like in a, in a spiritual sense, it's, a, it's the metaphor of, of, uh, of spiritual warfare. And so, what does it mean in, in uh, practical terms? What it means is, like every day, as I get up, like every single day, like, Lord, help me to see the truth today. Help me to see things as they really are like you see them. Help me to live right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to face all kinds of little decisions where I can take shortcuts and, and do the wrong thing, but help me to do the right thing. Uh, Lord, there's, there's all kinds of choices I can make of where, where I'm going or where I'm not going, but, but Lord, help me to go where, where you want me to go today. And, and Lord, help me to, to exercise faith, not fear. Help me to think your thoughts so that I know what to do. And uh, help, me to, help me to use the, the word, not just the tools of the world that are around me. And, and so every day as we, as we go through our Christian lives, it's, 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 we, we just have to have that awareness of God. And it's really easy to get distracted. And it's really easy to just to just kind of drift through life and, uh, and to kind of lose our spiritual focus sometimes. And so, so we need that old like St. Patrick prayer, like Christ every day, like Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ inside me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ to my left and to my right. Uh, that's what it means to put on the, the full armor of God. Now this is a really uh, this is a really basic kind of dumb illustration, but I hope it I hope it just solidifies some of the things I've said. There are two two cans of Coke. Um, I don't drink Coke. I just we just happen to have some in the house. So, uh, but uh, two cans of Coke. They both they they look basically the same. One of them is one of them is full and one of them is empty. The one that's the one that's empty. You can kind of. Uh, like it's empty and it's been opened, and and so so it's really easy to crush, and uh, and and Satan 
Like, that's Satan's will for us. He wants, he wants to crush us. This, this can of Coke, it, it looks the same. It was probably manufactured at the same time in the same place. Uh, but this one is filled, it's still full, uh, and it's sealed. And so when I, when I put this one, I could put like my full weight on it, and like nothing, it'll, it'll, it'll stand up. It'll stand in the way that the other one won't because it's filled and it's sealed. And guess what? As Christians, we are filled with the Holy Spirit and we are sealed by the Spirit. And so when I'm talking about be strong in the Lord, I'm not talking about our own strength. I'm talking about the strength that comes through our connection to God. And that's why uh, Paul kind of ends with the scripture that says, pray on all occasions with all kinds of prayers inspired by the Spirit. And uh, so the key word is in good times and bad times, with thanks, whether it's thanksgiving or petition, uh, we need to... We need to live with this awareness of God. We're relying on the Holy Spirit and, uh, and, 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 just, and being in an attitude, a constant attitude of prayer. And that's what we're going to do today. And so there are some of you right now that, uh, you know, you're, you're just having a great summer. You're having an awesome summer, and you're kind of cruising through. Praise God for that. But I also believe that today there are some people here and you are in the middle of some spiritual battles. There are some attacks going on from the enemy in your life. You are, you are living in the day of trouble. And, uh, and, and I just want to encourage you today. Like all you need to do is just stand. You need to just stand your ground in that and, uh, and let, let God give you the strength that you need to get through that. And so, so there are some that, that need the strength to, to stand as we pray today, the strength to stand. And you may also need somebody to stand with you. There's something about, there's something about being in the church and, and being with God's people that there, there's just something about knowing that somebody is standing with you that gives you, like you can borrow some of their strength when your strength is weak. And so today, uh, as, as, as we pray, uh, the, the call is particularly for people that would say, like, I, am, I feel like I'm under spiritual attack. Like, I feel like the enemy is, 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 has been assaulting uh, my life, maybe yourself, or it may be somebody, your children, somebody else, but there's a spiritual battle going on, uh, and it's serious, and, and you just want to say, like, I'm, I'm bringing this to God, I'm going to stand and bring it to God, and I'm going to let other people stand with me, and, and we're going we're gonna to pray through this thing. And uh, so Pastor Andy is going to come, and he is gonna, he's going to pray for us. But I really want to encourage you that if you're in a spiritual battle today, uh, as, as the prayer teams come up, uh, like don't, don't just try to handle it on your own. Uh, like stand, come forward, get in a place of prayer, and we're, we'll bring those things to God because he wants to give us the strength to stand.